in my search for the strange in the world of jewel books, I have come across many disturbing tales on the internet. They reflect the dark roots of beauty, tales which give us but a glimpse into the endless expanse of the shadow realm that lies hidden beneath the surface of what otherwise appears a simple trading card game. So now, check your alone, turn down the light, and be prepared to embrace the darkness. Yu-Gi-Oh type ghosts. I've been playing the Yu-Gi-Oh card game for a long time, and every now and then I do some research on new cards and archetypes. A couple of months ago, I was looking around on Yu-Gi-Oh Wiki and found something disturbing. Apparently, Kazuki Takahashi tried to make a new type to be released alongside the sidekick, Ghosts. This might be the reason behind the joke in Video Zixon when Astral asks Yuna what kind of card a ghost is. From what I read, it was widely released in Japan and only one pack series was released in the UK. That was exclusively Ghost Five Pack. Teams don't ritual, and they were only in stores for about a month. There wasn't much reason behind it on the wiki page, just that strange anomalies were happening around the places that a lot of ghost type cards were gathered, mostly tournament and Sega jewelry areas. I'm guessing there were no other details. After a little more research, I noticed that most of the ghost type cards were either spirit cards or turned into zombie type cards in laser pack release. One card that caught my eye on the Latin list was Ill Wood, which was released in Crossroads of Chaos. I myself owned one, so I was curious if the effect of the ghost type was the same. I didn't see the ghost type version on the wiki. However, since there was only a couple released in the pack, it must have been an oldie, I told myself. I eventually forgot about it, being in school and all, but when summer break started, my interest was renewed. I searched eBay for a long while before finding something interesting. A bolt set of 119 cards with the thumbnail being a ghost reader. Ill Blood card. The kind released in the Tombstone Ritual Pack. After reading the product description, I learned that the bolt set was in fact the entire English set released in the UK. Plus, a few dupla kits. There were no bids, and it was for only $2. With only an hour left to bid, I clicked bid and raised it to $5, just to make sure those cards were mine. Strangely enough, despite the fact there was an hour left on the auction, 
the screen change to say, thank you for purchasing the item. Please proceed to check out. Now, I'm not a big eBay user, but I'm sure that when you bid, it doesn't automatically thank you for buying the item. Just for bidding, and that you would be notified when bidding was over, or if someone outbid you. Anyway, I shook off my strange feeling and continued to pay for the card. Almost immediately after the purchase, I got an email from the seller. This is what it said. Thank you so, so, so much for buying the cards from me. You have no idea how long I've been trying to get rid of them. I wouldn't be surprised if you sell them off again later on. Thanks again, though. At the time, I had no idea what he meant by that, but once I received the card, I knew, instantly. At first, everything was normal. Cardboard box, send label, tape. However, it took me a second to realize that the sender used red tape. Who uses red tape for a box? I wondered. I shook the feeling off. Who, assuming he ran out of regular tape? It can happen, right? So without another thought, I opened the box and sifted through the card. As promised, there were either ghost type monster cards or their support spells and traps. All had the call number starting with T S R T, indicating that they are all from the Boomstone Ripple Pack set. Time went in on from there. I made a bet and jeweled a few people. I got a lot of complaints because my opponents thought these cards were fake. But since I mostly jeweled my friends who don't mind at all, I didn't care. My best friend, who for the purpose of security we will call Samantha, was a perky blonde who was always trying to beat me, but never could, so long as I was using my ghost. The one card she dreaded most was the one card I always seemed to be able to draw against her. Ill blue. You see, unlike the zombie Gemini version released in Crossroads of Chaos, the ghost type was able to special summon itself from my hand if I controlled only one ghost type. And all of my opponents by the field were anything but Samantha hated this. Seeing as how I am very conservative with my monsters and never summon them unless I absolutely have to. She's always surrendering at that moment, like she thought that if I attack for game with ill blue, something awful would happen. This went on for a while, until Sam got so disheveled that when I played Ill Blue, she didn't surrender, stating she didn't care who was going to win. She had finally conquered that son of a bee anyway. It concerned me that she referred to a card like it was a person. But I shook off this notion and won two turns later with a direct attack from Ill Blue. That night I got a call from Samantha's mother saying she had slipped in her nightly shower and broken her neck. I was so well, it's been a year now, and I still don't have a word for it. I didn't even want to go to her funeral and see her head still tilted 
at an angle. I decided right then and there I was going to stop playing the game altogether since playing it more would keep reminding me of the last time I saw her alive, yelling at my car, calling as the son of a bee. What could she have meant by it? What? The morning after, I was told my best friend was dead. I woke up holding the ill blue car, but something about it had changed. Instead of it being ghost red, it was colored in and non holographic, but the name was a shiny indented black, like the rears from Battle Pack Epic Door. The picture, instead of having a giant eye and mouth, and the stomach of the monster, held a girl being sucked into the depths of its fat belly. D.D. warrior lady, who everyone said Samantha looked like. The text had also changed to read, She's mine now, not yours. If you want her, you know what to do. I'm here, watching and waiting. And watching and waiting and watching and waiting and watching and waiting and watching and waiting and watching and waiting, watching, watching, waiting. I was officially done, unable to even, never before had I seen a card like this. I knew it couldn't be a fake because everything that needed to be real was in place. And I never seen a fake card with a battle pack like a name engraving. Oh, almost forgot. The entire front of the car was faded and eerie red. I wish I still had it with me to show you, but what happened after was just too much for me. The dreams I had after Sam died got worse and worse, going from just a small night terror to full-on sweat and paranoia-inducing nightmares. The worst one had me chained down in a steel room, facing ill blue, as he dangled Sam's decaying body in front of me each time. She would swing towards me. Another chunk of me would be taken by her long, almost claw-like nails that dug into me. Now, bear in mind, Ill Blue wasn't the only spook I had to deal with. Oh no, he was just the beginning. After a couple of days of being haunted by Sam, I started seeing other ghosts here and there, around the house, in my sleep, in my books, everywhere. By far, the one that scared me the most is the one I call the King. His card was actually Universitas Rex, which translates to King of the Universe. He could take the shape of any dead thing on any planet, but his favorite form was a young man about my age, nearly completely decayed with a strange white and redness trailing behind him. He, no, it was the most persistent. Even when I didn't see it, I knew it was there, behind me, watching. I can clearly remember not putting its card in the deck because it was too hard to look at. I guess that was my punishment, having to either look at or smell it, always. But something else dawned on me at around the same time. I found one sole picture of the packer for Tombstone Ritual. 
on it was a background of brave Marcus, and in the foreground was the king, which meant that the other ghosts were his soldiers, and if there is a king with soldiers, there is a war. A war for what, you might ask? A war for my soul is my answer. But they wouldn't win me over. I started to put the deck in a red deck box and others in a box wrapped in red tape. While the dreams and visions continued, my life was almost normal again. However, one day after school, I found my box open and all of the cards scattered across the floor, wave after wave of pure negative energy blown through me, pulsing with my blood. My head was splitting with pain. I was brought to my knees. You will bow before the king. A voice rang out inside my head. I forced myself to look up, and standing there was the king. His face held an evil smirk, and he started to look more and more like me. Just see, Drew, the war has only just begun. You think you're the only one we're after. How foolish! I realized in that moment that the ghosts weren't just after me. They wanted everything. I had all that I loved and cared for. I tried to stand. I tried to defend myself. The king just laughed and stepped through me, sending a shiver up my spine. I blacked out after. In my dream, the ghost army was a symbol before me, bowing. I looked around with pride, believing I conquered them. Finally, even the infamous Ubu kneeled to me. My joy was short-lived because a row of soul reflectors, a ghost-type support card, stood before me. Their mirror sign showed me who I really was, what I really was. The skin came dripping off my face like water. I stood tall and proud in a black robe with a golden crown resting on my head. My empty eyed sockets stared soullessly back at me. I was the king. I woke up. In hospital, hooked to an IV bag and a vital sensor, my parents were standing over me. They told me how about three more of my friends died while I was out. Two in a car accident and one in a break-in. Needless to say, I was rough. The ghost had taken another group of friends, and nobody else knew it but me. I'm sure you say, why not tell anyone about this? My answer is, you're right. I'll just tell them that my friends are dying because a box of haunted trading cards are sitting in my room. Let's just see how far they put me away in that nice little white room with the jacket that makes me hug myself. <clears throat> when I got home, I decided to do some research for the first time. As it turns out, from what I found on a deeply hidden forum post, on a site I have long since forgotten. When the ghost types were printed, three of Konami's workers fell into the press. Those three have 
still not being named, but it is rumored that one of them was a murderer, explaining the rest of the souls haunting these cards. I tried to get a hold of the person who posted this information, hoping to find out more. However, I soon found out that he or she had deleted his or her account about two years prior. As you could probably assume, I was annoyed to no end. I was left with little information, an army of spirits haunting a set of cards, four friends dead, and the guilt of an apparently hefty medical bill on my parents. I figured there was only one thing left to do. I had to destroy the card. My first attempt was to cut them to bits. It only made things worse as the ghosts began to multiply in my dreams tenfold. So I thought I should burn them. Also not good because the morning afterwards I found all of the cards neatly stacked next to my computer with the ill blood and universitalis rex on top. I contemplated sending them through a few wash cycles with some heavy, juicy bleach, but ultimately decided against it as if it were I'd be stuck cleaning the machine for days. I kept trying and trying and trying to rid myself of the curse for three whole months. Out of options, out of luck, and out of the will to go on, I tried one last desperate act to save myself. I made an eBay ad. I advertised the entire 119-card set of tombstone ritual with some duplicate. I set the thumbnail as a ghost rear of ill blue. I set the starting bid price at two dollars. I prepared the cardboard box with red tape when I saw that someone else had bid for five dollars with about an hour left of hope. I ended the auction and immediately sent the buyer an email. Thank, thank you so, so, so much for buying the cards from me. You have no idea how long I've been trying to get rid of them. I wouldn't be surprised if you sell them off again later on. Thanks. Again, I sent the cards off to the buyer the same day. I was free, finally free. That night, I had the best sleep in months. No nightmares, no king, no dead friends. Just darkness, how I like it. The above is a transcript of a video file found on the computer of the deceased James Jackson. He and his family died in a house fire a week after the video was created. Investigation report has found no discernible cause for the fire and have written it off as an accident. What the report left out was that the only items in the house not reduced to ash were the computer this video was found on and a Yu-Gi-Oh playing card. University Rex.